Okay, so in this video, we will discuss the row reduction algorithm. Now, an algorithm is simply a finite sequence of operations. We've seen the three types of row operations in our previous video. The question is, as we've said, is how do we systematically apply these row operations to solve any linear system in the most effective way? Let's consider first this algorithm conceptually, and then I'll show you a very simple example of how this may work. And as you go through the following videos, you'll see more and more complicated examples to hopefully reinforce your understanding of this algorithm. So the first step, of course, is if you're given a linear system, is to consider the augmented matrix. The question is now, how do you combine your row operations to simplify the linear system? The idea is you always start from the leftmost column and using the row operations you try and construct a 1 in the very top row. I will always circle these 1's and they are actually very special entries. They are called leading 1's. That's always the very first step. From the leftmost column, use the row operations any way you see fit. Right? You can swap two rows, you can multiply a row by a non-zero number, and you can add or subtract a multiple of one row to a different row. Any way you see fit, construct a leading one in the very top row, and then you will use this one and the third type of row operations to kill all the entries below, to make everything below zero. And once that's done, then you will simply ignore the top row of your matrix, and you will repeat this very same idea on the smaller sub-matrix. So you'll start over. You'll look at the leftmost column, and you'll try to introduce a leading one now in the top row. Oops. And once you introduce this leading one, you will then use it as a third type of row operation to kill all the entries below, to make everything below zero. And then, of course, if you see where this is going, you'll ignore this row too, and you'll repeat. You'll try and look in the leftmost column and find a way to introduce a one in the top row kill everything below and you'll keep going until you reach eventually the bottom row of your matrix. Since there are only a finite number of rows of equations, at some point you will reach the bottom row. And once you reach the bottom row, this will be the end of your row reduction. Now there are two, there's a subtle point here, because once you reach the bottom row there are two different approaches. The first one is called Gaussian elimination, and that is the one that you'll use when every variable has a leading one, so those will be called leading variables. If this happens, you will then use backward substitution, and you'll always have a unique solution. On the other hand, if you reach the bottom row, and not every variable has a leading one, the ones that do not will be called free variables, and then you'll have an infinite number of solutions. And then you will use something a little different, which is called Gaussian elimination. The difference is, suppose you have a 1 here. If some variables don't have leading 1s, then you will work from the last leading 1 up to the first one, and what you will do is use the third type of row operation to introduce zeros also above every other possible leading one. And once this is done, you'll have a system that has an infinite number of solutions, and you will easily be able to write the complete solution set from this new augmented matrix. That's basically it. So the major steps are get a leading one from the left in the top row, kill the entries below, ignore, and repeat. Try and get your next leading one in the leftmost column in the top row, clear the entries below, and you just keep going until you hit the last row. And what you do then will become hopefully clearer 
as you go through the following videos where I show you explicit examples of this algorithm. And that's basically real reduction. So let's do a simple example with two equations, two unknowns. This would be an example of Gaussian elimination using so-called backwards substitution. Suppose we have 2x plus 5y equals 4 and 3x plus 7y equals negative 6. We want to solve this linear system using, of course, our augmented matrix, our elementary row operations, and this so-called row reduction algorithm. So first, we construct our augmented matrix. And then we apply the algorithm. With the leftmost column, we're trying to get a leading one in the top row. Well, this can easily be done if we multiply row one by one half. And once we multiply a row by a real number, we multiply every entry of the row by this real number. So one half times two, one. This is now a leading one. One half times five, five half. One half times four, two. We are not changing row two, so we can recopy it. Oops, this is negative six, not negative seven. And if you look at the algorithm, once you have your leading one in the leftmost column in the top row, you use it to kill the entries below it. Well, you can kill this three with this one. If you do three minus three times one will give you zero. And so we do row two minus three times row one. We are not changing row one, so we can recopy it. Leading one, five half, two. Let's perform this row operation now. Row 2 minus 3, row 1. So 3 minus 3 times 1 is 3 minus 3 is 0. 7 minus 3 times 5 half. Let's compute this on the side. 7 minus 3 times 5 half. is negative one half and negative six negative three times row one so negative six negative three times two is negative six so negative six minus six is negative twelve now that every entry below our leading one is zero we ignore and we try and construct our second leading one well it can come from this entry as it is zero it will come from this one, and so we'll multiply row 2 by negative 2, and we'll obtain our second leading 1. We can recopy row 1 as we are not changing it. So negative 2 times 0, 0. Negative 2 times negative 1 half, positive 1, our second leading 1 negative 2 times negative 12, positive 24. And if you notice now we've reached the bottom row, and the question is now what do we use? As I've said before, we have two options here. We can either use backwards substitution, or we could use what's called Gauss-Jordan elimination. Well, we have two variables, x and y. They are both leading variables, as they both have a leading one. And when all the variables are leading, this will always imply that you have a unique solution. And when you have a unique solution, you should always use what's called backwards substitution. And the name gives it away. It is a substitution now performed backwards. So we start from the very last variable, the very last row, and we will work our way backwards. Look at the last row of our augmented matrix. And let's simply rewrite the corresponding equation. 
This was the column for the x coefficients, for the y coefficients. And so this says that 0 times x, which is 0, plus 1 times y, so all we are left with is y, vertical bar means an equal sign, equals 24. Then we work backwards, so we go up now to the second leading one, which will allow us to solve for x. So we have 1 times x, which is x. Now if you think of it, here we have an equal sign equals 2, but there is on the left of the equal sign a 5 half times y. We're trying to isolate x, so we must send the 5 over 2 times y on the right hand side, and of course it becomes a negative 5 over 2 times y. If you don't see it automatically, you just rewrite the equation. 1 times x, x, plus 5 over 2 times y equals 2. And that should be clear that if you solve for x, you will get x is equal to 2 minus 5 over 2 times y. But we have just found the value of y, so we can substitute. We'll get 2 minus 5 over 2 times y, which is 24. 24 over 2 is 12, times 5 is 60, so we get 2 minus 60, which is simply negative 58. And so we now have our unique solution, as we claimed, because both variables have a leading one, they are both leading variables, which will always imply that you have a unique solution. We now rewrite in the correct order, x is negative 58, y is positive 24. And this is backward substitution. We could have, and this is just to show you what the idea is, use Gauss-Jordan elimination. But every time all the variables are leading, so they all have a leading one, you will always have a unique solution. You should always use backward substitution, as this will be the most efficient way of solving for the linear system. It may not be apparent for such a small system, but as you get a more and more complex system, this will be more and more efficient. But just for fun, let's use Gauss-Jordan elimination. Up to now, up to here, this was simply called Gaussian elimination. Once you get your leading ones in the top row, you kill the entries below and you keep going. Once you reach the bottom row, all of this is called Gaussian elimination. And all that Gauss-Jordan elimination is, is what we've discussed previously. Now that every entry below the leading ones is zero, go backwards and make every entry above equal to zero. This will be very short, so let's kill this entry with this one. Let me just recopy the augmented matrix. So we have one, five half, two, zero, one, twenty-four, and now to kill this five half with this one, we will simply do row one minus five half of row two. We can recopy rule 1 as we are not changing it. Let's perform the operation. 1 minus 5 half times 0 is 1 minus 0, which is simply 1. 5 half minus 5 half times 1 is 5 half minus itself, which is 0. And 2, and if you notice here, mm -hmm, 2 minus 5 half times 24, 2 minus 5 half times 24, 2 minus 5 half times 24 is simply negative 58. And if there were entries above this one, we would also make them equal to 0. And now we can write 
the final solution set quite easily. Look at the first equation. 1 times x plus 0 times y, well that's just equal to x, equals negative 58. Second equation, 0 times x is 0, plus 1 times y, we're left with y, equals 24. And that's it. But the rule of thumb is, if ever all the variables are leading, you should always use backward substitution. For a larger system, this will be more efficient. It will require fewer calculations than using Gauss-Jordan elimination. On the other hand, if some variables don't have leading ones, they will become free variables, and a more effective approach will be Gauss-Jordan elimination. And this distinction will become clearer as you watch the following videos.